Hello friends and subscribers, happy Christmas. Welcome back to Daniel's Tech World on YouTube. My name's Daniel Rosal and this is my technically oriented YouTube channel. One of my growing network on uh, YouTube. This one is just really all about my tech specific videos. I talk about connection bonding and advanced internet setups. I talk a lot about stuff related for video production like microphones and especially stuff that works with Linux. And I've also done a bunch of videos about the MDisc which is this wacky optical media that I chanced upon about two years ago. And it's actually an amazing product. It's basically a Blu-ray uh, that has been modified a little bit to make it actually designed for cold storage. In other words, it's a type of uh, optical storage media, and we're going to get into what that is, but think CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays. That's actually been engineered a little bit differently to make it absolutely optimal, optimum for retaining data in cold storage. For those who haven't had the pleasure of listening to me, listening to me yammer on about this, the problem with cold storage, and cold storage means storing your data, whether that's photographs or videos or documents, or really any type of digital data, is that uh, something called bit rot or data rot. There's a really interesting Wikipedia article for those who want to really kind of dive deep into this. But basically what it means is that if you put a bunch of data on a hard drive and you leave that on your shelf, disconnected from any computer system what's going to happen is that over time as time goes on there's going to be an increasing chance that that data is going to be rotten bits are going to flip and in the case of magnetic uh, data systems that means basically that they lose their polarity and even a couple of flip flip flipped bits uh, can ruin the data becomes corrupted sometimes it can be restored sometimes it can't be restored this obviously isn't a problem if you're storing data on something like a server because servers have something called raid and data scrubbing especially if you're storing it on cloud storage you don't need to worry about any of this stuff because the cloud provider worries about provisioning storage that is good and the storage is going to be live it's connected to the connected to a network and running all the time so that gets over that problem um but uh for cold data it is a theoretical problem now some optical media seems like something that should no longer be in existence right compared to the clouds and whatever you're like it just seems like something that should be relegated to history but it's not actually even the most old school data storage technology still in widespread use that is probably something called lto a linear tape optical there actually remains massively popular for backup and archival applications especially in enterprises where they have terabytes or sometimes even petabytes of data anyway let me just bring 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 this back to focus here what i want to talk about in this video today is i put together this little presentation showing the different types of uh, archival grade optical media beyond just the m disk so um by which I mean to say that there are actually in all the categories of optical media, there are actually products that hold themselves out as being archival grade. And uh, let me, I started by just writing my definition. This isn't something anyone else came up with. Uh, so this is just my attempt at what, what do they mean by archival grade? So I say that archival grade is intended usually to mean that there's something different about the disc constitution, right? We're talking about optical media, we're talking about discs here. So something different about how they engineer the disc that is uh, offering it a projected stable lifespan in cold storage above that typically expected with that type of optical storage media. By which I mean, if a CD is suppose on average expected, a CD or a CD you burn yourself is on average expected to be good for five years, if it's an archival grade CD, it's going to be better than that five years. That to to call it to qualify to to have it marketed as that. So here's a quick refresh or a quick uh you know for those who have forgot about archival storage media. And again, this is I'm not interested in archival storage because it's I think it's geeky and cool the way that some people are into uh, vinyl records because they find them nostalgic. I'm actually a really I really back up all my videos on the M disc. Uh, so I actually find it immensely practical. This is my entire video backup strategy is based around, for me, actually, it's a combination of Blu-ray, which is what I use to back up kind of my uh, shoot libraries. And the M-Disc is what I back up my finished videos onto. So when I finish this video uh, that I'm current currently screening, it's going to go onto my NAS. And when the NAS gets up to 25 gigs, I'll download that, burn two M-Discs. One stays here, 
one goes off site and that's been working for about three years now so you have the cd which uh these days is has, has the least application because of the fact that it's got the smallest max storage capacity cds can get up to 700 megabytes 650 is more typical but 700 is kind of what you'll see dvds again i can't even remember what the average i think it's 4.7 is your normal dvd but according to the internets the internets they can be engineered to store up to 17 gigs blu-rays um actually have substantially more storage on a single layer you can get 25 gigs but uh, there's this four layer or quad layer technology called BDXL that cracks, cranks it up to 128 gigs. And I put the M-Disc as a variant. Some people might disagree with that. The M-Disc could be its own type of disc. Other people would say there's not much difference. It's just a slightly re-engineered uh, M-Disc uh, Blu-ray. So I just kind of put it in that way. But so what we're gonna be doing in today's video is looking at uh, examples of archival products that are in addition to the M disc, and we're going to see that they actually exist across all the all the forms of optical media. By the way, these are almost all verbatim products. No uh, bias here. I'm clearly not working for verbatim or an affiliate. I don't. I doubt that's a thing. I don't think affiliate marketing exists in the world of obscure storage optical media. But needless to say, that's not what I'm doing. Uh, but um, they're really verbatim or have kind of kept the flame going for archival media. And that's why practically everything is, ju is just by verbatim. The M-Disc, for example, is now a proprietary verbatim technology. They kept it going. The startup that developed the tech went broke. Uh, and that's life. Um, I think they're a great company. All their products have been absolutely great that I've ever used. So support them. So this is the uh, firstly just kind of bog standard archival grade CDRs. They're 700 megabytes. And uh, you can see this says here, ultra life gold archival grade, and they've got a hard coding. So again, they usually say something like there's a different coding on it that makes it archival grade. I'll just push myself off to the side and where I have my cursor here, you can see that it says there was a lifespan listed somewhere here, unless I'm going crazy. Uh, maybe I didn't get it in the screenshot. So, but anyway, it's archival grade. Most of them have say something like it's good. It's projected to be good for 100 years or, or whatever. Um, oh, maybe it says it, maybe, maybe it says it here. Archival grade. And this actually was the same, uh, text that they used for the archival DVD Rs. Blah, blah, blah. Technology plays an important role in our lives. Here's a schematic of how it works. And here's the claim where I've underlined verbatim archival grade media is one of the most durable, curable, of, durable of all designed to last for up to 100 years when properly stored. So I actually say, so the MDIS claims to be a 1000 year technology. And I've, I've always made the point that um, 100 years is probably good enough, right? Really what you want to do is have your data safe for until the next generation where when when your pair when your children will either uh, shove it into an attic never to be seen again or put it on to the next archival storage data so i think 1000 years is kind of like pointless like is in 800 years in the future are there even going to be m disk readers and usb ports and computers as we have today right the was the vast progression of technology i think once you get to 100 years it's you can consider consider that to be archival enough so i kind of think does the is there actually really any point in buying the m discs i just like the fact they're engineered for archival but you could say these are too um I, given me being me i tend to go kind of all in on things i'm probably i've ordered some blu-ray archival i probably end up getting some cdr and DVD-R just to like kind of finish off my collection. This is that schematic. I'm just gonna have a quick sip of water here. Showing how the actual disc is engineered and uh, this is what makes it uh, hold on to your data. Here's a bit of a more attractive product packaging. I see this and I'm like, if I saw this in a store, which I haven't, I don't know if these are actually still still CDs or even stocked in many bricks and mortars. I don't recall ever seeing, I mean, I've seen rewritable CDs bunches of times. I don't think I've ever seen them archival grade because even before I got, it, got into this, 
Uh, I'm something of a data hoarder. People might know that subreddit. People who are, are always worried about losing their data. So if I saw this, I would have been all over. I'd been like, give me 10 packs of these archival grade CDRs. Uh, so I don't think I've seen them in real life, but these I just pulled all these screenshots and product descriptions from Amazon. 700 megs, 52 times speed, and can hold up to uh, projected 80 minutes. So uh, let's move on to DVDs. I'll just go through these a bit quicker. Again, same situation. We have a kind of uglier presentation product, which are blank intended for ink, ink, uh, you know, being printed on by a printer. So these are what are called ultra life archival grade DVDRs up to eight times. 4.7 gigs is their capacity. These again are for verbatim and they sell them in 50 spindles or the five packs in the jewel cases. This uh, product is on Amazon for currently 100 bucks, so that would be $2 per disc for 4.7 gigs. And people complain about the price, and I actually, I, I'm one of the contrarians who think that if you're buying something that's actually archival grade, I think, you know, to get 5 gigs of your, of important data on for 5 bucks, uh, I think it's relatively decent, and if you need bigger capacity, you can, of course, start looking at stuff like BDXL. Uh, here is what the disc looked like. Pretty cool, I think. Uh, nice little gold, and they've got the verbatim archival grey DVD on the inside of the disc. Um, and this is again the uh, product packaging for the archival grey DVD Rs. Oh, looks lovely. I would love to get a whole collection of these. I will. I will get there eventually. Uh, so these. Okay. So finally, something not from verbatim. This is from uh, Sony. It's these. Remember, I mentioned the quad quad uh, blu-ray so this is an example of that so it's a quad blu-ray which gives it a total capacity of 128 gigs and this is 90 for 10 discs 90 usd the list price is 100 so let's just use the list price so it's actually 10 dollars per disc um but it's 128 gigs per disc as well uh these are three these they're manufactured in japan for record for recording others so i was gonna say it doesn't say how long they're supposed to last i forgot to include there's one really wacky 24 gold carat mastering discs that are truly wild uh and they're about 10 bucks each as well but they're actually made out of gold so these guys are 50 years and i reiterate the earlier point that I, I would feel very confident, you know, the the archival work I'm doing currently, putting my stuff, my YouTube videos in safe storage on two copies, I'd say 50 years is fine. Like, in 50 years, um, there should be something better on the market. So I just see all archiving throughout history, even way, way before the digital era, you know, stuff was preserved in paper and then on microfiche and then from there being stored on computer systems so the formats always change over the long run and you just need something that's going to pr prudently store your data for the next little bit of history uh, and hope that the readers will be backward compatible at the point that you do your upgrade so uh looking at uh blu-rays that aren't mdisc that are just standard blu-rays so these are again from verbatim they're bdrs and they come in uh, 25 and 50 gigs and they come in spindles from 10 to 50 and uh these are and just looking at where i've highlighted here 100 year archival life so again for the standard blu-rays 100 for the mdisc 1000 or a millennium they're mille millennia discs that's what that's by the way what the m in mdiscs is from so we finally get to the mdiscs wow the mdiscs uh this these are the 100 gig M discs uh and here's the here's what they say about them unlike traditional optical media which which utilize dyes that can break down over time data stored on M disc is engraved on a patented inorganic right layer it will not fade or deteriorate you can see here the dramatic claim 10 years for a hard drive that's kind of generous actually 100 for a cd or a archival grade those are their other uh, verbatim's other products and then 1000 years for the mdisc which is of course 10x over the 100 year projected lifespan of the archival grade non-mdisc material here's how they say the magic is achieved with mdisc media data is engraved into an inorganic layer resistant to light and humidity for unmatched disc life expectancy data is engraved into this inorganic layer 
adhesive layer. It's pitted actually. Um, and they have these other layers on top of it. Final slide is just to show you guys wrap up the, um, the product lineup that they have here in verbatim. The four categories, the CDRs, the DVDRs, the BDRs, the Blu-rays, and finally the M-Disc. So uh, that is it. Basically, there are archival grade uh, products for all the optical media classes, all four or three, depending on how you count them. Um, and the difference is the M-Discs are rated for 1,000 years, but there are a bunch of products that are rated for 100 years. If you get a Blu-ray writer that's also M-Disc compatible, it can almost certainly write DVDs and CDs as well. And basically the choice of which optical media you want to use just really depends on what kind of capacity makes most sense to you for your archiving projects per disc. This is, of course, not a thorough, uh, not a uh, exhaustive a list of all the archival grade optical media options out there. There are definitely others they haven't covered, uh, but these are the main ones and they're available on amazon.com. And still, despite this being almost 2024, they're still not terribly hard to find. And there still very much is a vibrant market for this technology for the purpose of archival and uh, offline cold data storage. Thanks for watching this video. Hope it was helpful for someone. And if you want to get more videos from me, please subscribe to Daniel's Tech World, this channel on YouTube.